In my experience engaging with Melchizedek, and I've engaged Melchizedek a number of times, um, I find that people seem tend to overcomplicate things really a lot. And do we honestly think that someone that Jesus is of the order of Melchizedek as a king and a priest, and that Melchizedek himself would not be someone who was representing the heart and love of God? Of course, there's personality involved, but I've never found Melchizedek snobbish or you can't approach him. Yes, I've engaged him in certain situations where I've come across him or I've gone into a, a cave behind the waterfall and found Melchizedek was there. Um, also, you know, there are many other of the cloud of witnesses, uh, you know, that also have um, either experience that you can draw on or encounter them and they have their own personalities. But Melchizedek as being one who I believe was one created right at the beginning, along with wisdom, and they were there representing what Jesus did before the foundation of the world. I think there's too much sort of, well, Mil Melchizedek is the chief of the treasury room of heaven and things like that. And yes, he is one of the 12 high chancellors. And there's lots of things that Melchizedek is involved with. But Jesus is the thing that we need to focus on and who we need to focus on, not Melchizedek. Jesus is of the order of Melchizedek, which just means he's a king and a priest. And he is our high priest and he's the one who's preparing us. So if God has a purpose for our engaging Melchizedek, then that's fine. But Melchizedek himself is, is not unapproachable um, and he's not someone we should be fearing because he's a, he's a created being that was created by God to help us in our role as sons of God, because we are of the order of Melchizedek. And that all, uh, order is a representation of the four faces of God, the aspects of God's government in sonship, the priest, the, the king, the legislator, the oracle, the legislator, those four functions of heavenly government in sonship. And Melchizedek was an earthly representation of that, but he also had heavenly functions and heavenly purposes and heavenly roles. So I wouldn't get too concerned about all of the things people say, just go with your own experiences. If uh, if you wanna meet Melchizedek, ask the father if you can meet him. Yeah, if, if you just come across him, then just take it as you find it. Sometimes encounters can be somewhat symbolic and they have, meanings almost like allegorical meanings in the encounter that give us some sort of thing to pursue or something to um to look into or, or delve into but i've never found any angelic being do anything other than represent god well in terms of um any being i've met whether it be wisdom melchizedek you know enoch <laughs> as a human being that lives in that realm or any others, you know, it's never have I found them to be anything other than a representing of the heart of God and the love of God through who they are. So I just encourage you again, just continue to pursue the relationship with God and just don't get too uptight about what other people say in a contradictory way. If it doesn't really align with love, just ignore it. That would be my, uh, encouragement ignore things which don't seem to line up with love or, or make it complicated or put protocols and things on things oh you must trade everything you've done in the with melchizedek on the trading floor i've heard that one said so everything you do and experience with god then you've got to go and engage melchizedek and trade it <laughs> it's just a ritual and to be honest i've never done that and it's never had any negative impact on my life um, so I would just encourage you pursue Father, pursue Jesus, pursue the Spirit in relationship and enjoy and rest in that wonderful, unconditional love, limitless grace and triumph and mercy. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.